Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Physiology Learning. I am Dr. Ram. In today's series, we are going to study the most important topic that is the decorticate and decerebrate rigidity. This is very commonly asked by the examiners in VIVAS as well as the MCQ part of the examination. So, it is also a little confusing. We will try to make it easier. Since we have already studied our descending tracts, it is pretty much easy to understand. I would suggest all of you to watch the descending tracks video and come back to this video. So, coming to the topic, we are discussing our CNS lecture wherein we are discussing our motor system under which we are discussing our decorticate and decerebrate rigidity. So, coming to these pathways, these pathways already we have discussed in our descending tracks, but just we will revise them back so that we get a knack of it. Here we can see that we have basically the descending tracks are classified into lateral tracks and medial tracks. The red ones are the lateral tracks and the blue ones are the medial tracks. And here I have described the cortex, midbrain, pons, medulla, cervical means these fibers if I stop a tract at somewhere in the cervical region, it means that these are giving fibers to the upper limb only. And coming to the lumbosacral, if any tract is coming till the way to the lumbosacral, it means that it is giving branches to the upper limb also as well as the lower limb also. So, these are the major classifications that we are going to understand. So, coming to the tracks, there are only two major tracks in the lateral system of pathways. That is the rubrospinal tract as we have mentioned here, red nucleus. This red nucleus is nothing but a rubrospinal tract. This rubrospinal tract is one of the most important tracks in this understanding this decorticate and decerebrate rigidity. What they do is they go all the way only till the cervical region. That is they are innovating only the upper limb pathway. And what they are doing is they are giving branches for the alpha flexes. So, whenever this pathway is activated, what will happen to the upper limb? The upper limb is going to contract and flex because it is directly giving branches to the alpha flexes. Now, coming to the corticospinal tract, the corticospinal tract, both the lateral as well as the medial, they are going to give for alpha flexes only. They are going to give for alpha flexes, whereas the lateral corticospinal tract is for the distal muscles, distal muscles that is the fine movements muscles. Whereas, medial corticospinal tract is for the proximal muscles. And coming to the tectospinal tract, that is the third tract, which is in the midbrain, which starts in the midbrain. See, we have drawn at the level of the midbrain. And this tectospinal tract is innervating the head and eye muscles. Then coming to two reticulospinal tracts, that is the pontine reticulospinal and medullary reticulospinal tracts. They have given here pons and medulla. These both of them are reticulospinal tracts and both of them will be innervating in the gamma extensors. And all of us know that gamma extensors cannot directly contract the muscle. They have to go to the extensor group and activate the intrafusal fibers. So, basically they are going to go to the intrafusal fibers. And finally, this intrafusal fibers are going to give sensation to the alpha extensors. And finally, they are going to cause the contraction. Whereas, one pathway can directly stimulate the alpha extensors. That is nothing but the vestibular nuclei pathway. Vestibular nuclei pathway. Among this pontine reticulospinal and medullary reticulospinal, we know that the pontine is stimulatory to the extensors, whereas the reticulospinal is inhibitory to the extensors. But already we saw that in our discussion of the descending tract itself, that is pontine reticulospinal fibers are dominant over medullary reticulospinal. So, when both of them are active, who is going to dominate? Pontine is going to dominate and he is going to cause the extensors of the limb. So, that is all about these pathways. Do not worry about it. G cerebrate and D corticate, we have one beautiful mnemonic to understand them very easily. So, now coming to the lesions. What is this D corticate? As the term suggests, D corticate. Here, we are going to take the cortex out of the picture. And one more thing before going into decorticate rigidity. All these tracts, they are under the influence of the cortex. So, cortex is like a boss who is sitting there and controlling and keeping in control of all the tracts. If the cortex is intact, if the cortex is functioning properly, he is going to keep other tracts under control. But if the cortex is not functioning, what is going to happen? All other tracts are going to perform their action very aggressively, very vigorously. So, for example, let's take one tract. If the red rubrospinal tract, that is a red nucleus tract, is under the control of cortex, it is not going to cause severe flexion. But when cortex is out of the picture and cortex is not controlling it, what is going to happen? It will cause severe flexion of the upper limb. Why upper limb? It is coming till the cervical. This is one of the example. 
this applies to all the tracks so all of them are basically under the control of the cortex so we will draw the cortical fibers for all the tracks all the tracks are influenced by the cortex but except the vestibular nuclear tract vestibular nuclear tract is closely associated with which part of the brain it is associated with the cerebellum because cerebellum and vestibular nuclei they are involved in balance mechanisms so the cerebellum the purkinje fibers they give a negative influence to the vestibular nuclei the cerebellar purkinje fibers purkinje fibers of the cerebellum is keeping the control so let's try to understand the lesions now so first lesion we are going to draw the decorticate lesion so decortication means the cortex we are trying to take it out of the picture so this lesion is in the upper midbrain region so this is the lesion so let's name this lesion as a so let's try to understand what happens in a in this lesion the corticospinal tract which are the flexors they are completely gone out of the picture because their fibers are not coming down so other tracts are going to influence the body now that is the extra pyramidal tracts other than the corticospinal tract is going to influence the body now who are all going to influence predominantly that is the rubrospinal tract as well as the pontine reticulospinal tract because rubrospinal tract let's see now rubrospinal tract which was under the control of cortex is free from cortical inhibition now what it is going to do it will cause severe flexion of the upper limbs only so what is happening in the upper limbs there is severe flexion so a is nothing but our decortication so let's try to understand what happens in decortication what is happening in the upper limb the upper limb the rubrospinal tract is going to be very active now and he is going to flex it so there is flexion of the upper limb now let's say, try to understand what happens with the other tracts the tectum does not have major influence on the limb because it is controlling the head and eye movements so basically we are going to consider three tracts only out of all these tracts and out of that also the pontine is dominant over medullary so pontine we are going to consider as well as the rubrospinal we are going to consider rubrospinal is causing the upper limb flexion so what do the pontine reticular fibers are doing the pontine reticular fibers are directly giving branches to the gamma extensors whenever gamma extensors are activated they indirectly can cause the alpha extensors to be activated and cause extension so where it goes it goes till the lower limb and it is going to cause the extension of the lower limb so the lower limbs are going to go for extension this is the feature of our decorticate rigidity why upper limb flexion because of the activation of the red nucleus the red nucleus is not inhibited by the cortex why there is lower limb extension because of the activation of the pontine reticulospinal tract which is dominant over the medullary reticulospinal tract now coming to the second lesion we are going to draw the second lesion in the upper pontine region so the second lesion is going to be here in the upper pontine region so what will happen whenever the lesion is in the upper pontine region so let's name this as b this b is nothing but our decerebrate rigidity so what happens in decerebrate rigidity see the flexors are all cut the corticospinal tract is also cut as well as the red nucleus is also cut now red nucleus is cut it was going to the upper limb flexors now upper limb flexors are not activated so what will happen to the upper limb the upper limb is going to go for extension because only the extensors are active now extensors like the pontine reticulospinal tract is only active now so what happens is going to the upper limb the upper limb is going to go for extension what is going to happen for the lower limb lower limb condition is very similar because the pontine reticulospinal tract is still active this tract is not damaged at all and they are going to still cause the lower limb extension so now coming to the conclusion what happens in decorticate rigidity there is upper limb flexion and lower limb extension what happens in case of decerebrate rigidity there is flexion of all four limbs now let's try to understand this with an easy mnemonic so coming to decorticate rigidity here upper limb flexion is there and lower limb extension is there decorticate rigidity as the name suggests you can see here there is only two e's so only two limbs are going to go for extension which two limbs are going to go for extension both the lower limbs are going to go for extension now coming to decerebrate the mnemonic is pretty simple how many e's are there 1 2 3 4 so all four limbs are going to go for extension so all four limbs are going to go for extension in your exams also if you are getting confused with it just use this mnemonic if there are four e's in the question that is decerebrate rigidity then the answer is going to be all four limbs go for extension and you can eliminate the rest of the options whenever there is two e's in case of decorticate rigidity 
two limbs are going to go for extension and we know that rubrospinal tract will make the all the difference and rubrospinal tract comes only for the upper limb and it is going to flex the upper limb so the answer is going to be only the lower limbs are going for extension and the upper limbs is going for flexion so what is the tract which is making the difference between a decorticate and a decerebrate rigidity in a decorticate rigidity the rubrospinal tract is preserved like the rubrospinal tract is not cut so that is the difference between a decorticate and a decerebrate rigidity which is responsible for the flexion of the upper limb in case of decorticate rigidity i hope it's clear now there are some additional lesions which are done along with the decerebrate rigidity this is not very important considering the decorticate and decerebrate rigidity but this is a good to know area so they are they are doing a decerebrate rigidity along with that they are doing some other manipulations in some other regions so let's try to understand this added lesions so our decerebrate rigidity is in the upper pons so since we have already named this as b we will keep the same naming this as b along with decerebrate rigidity suppose we are injuring the cerebellum also so what happens let's try to understand whenever cerebellum is injured let's take this point as c now what we are doing is we are combining b along with c so what decerebrate rigidity was doing it was extending all four limbs now what this purkinje cells were doing this purkinje cells of the cerebellum they were going and inhibiting the vestibular nuclei let's try to understand what this vestibular nuclei was doing this vestibular nu nuclei they are directly innervating the alpha extensor when somebody is directly innervating the alpha extensor it will cause more extension so whenever both the lesions that is both b and c is happening the decerebrate rigidity will be exaggerated this form of lesions is also called as decerebellate rigidity because in c we are cutting the cerebellum so this is also called as decerebellate rigidity now they are going to make one more lesion in the decerebrate rigidity which is also called as deafferentation we know that whenever gamma extensors are activated they are not going to directly contract the extensors they are going to go to the alpha extensors and contract them later they are going to go through the 1a fibers and activate the alpha extensors and finally contract it when they do a deafferentation like cutting of this afferent they were studying what is what was happening so for example now they have cut this afferent so let's take this lesion as d now they are combining b with d now they are combining b with d whenever d with d was combined that is decerebrate as well as deafferentation what will happen decerebrate is causing the rigidity but for it to cause the rigidity it has to activate the alpha extensor now this alpha extensor cannot be activated because we have cut the fibers which is activating the alpha extensors so what is going to happen the extension that is caused by the decerebrate rigidity is going to reverse back there is a reversal of decerebrate then they studied all three together like b c and d together whenever b c and d together is happening do you think there will be relaxation of the decerebrate rigidity the answer is no because the vestibular fibers are directly acting on the alpha extensors and they are going to cause the extension so there is no reversal of decerebrate rigidity when c is also involved that is the fibers of purkinje is also cut the cerebellum is also taken out of the picture then definitely extension will be there because they can directly contract the extensors so there is no reversal of decerebrate rigidity when all three are combined let's revise them one more time in decerebrate it has four e's so all four limbs go for extension whereas in case of decorticates it has two e's so it is going to go for upper limb flexion and lower limb extension and which is the tract which is making all the difference just remember this again and again it is rubro spinal tract this rubro spinal tract is preserved in cases of decorticate rigidity i hope it's clear thank you for watching if you like my video subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends thank you so much